Hi guys. Um, in this session today, we're going to follow up from where we left off on boards. And I'm going to talk about uh, layering. And I'm also going to talk about uh, setting up collisions on your uh, board environment. So I'm using the same board as last time. I'm just going to fill this uh, empty space that I have that we left at the end of the last tutorial. So I'm just going to use the bucket tool. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention about the bucket tool last um, last tutorial is that you can fill uh, any area that is uh, the same type of tile or that is empty. So you know you can fill that empty there, uh, empty space, and you could do something like grab another type of tile here, and I can fill all these floor tiles with something else. So it's like any kind of paint application that you've ever used. It will replace similar colors uh, underneath the bucket tool. So. And that's just something to note that I forgot about last last time. Um, so layering. Um, when would you want to use layering? Um, layering is pretty commonly used for cases where you need the player character to appear under or above certain objects. So let's take these pillar, this pillar here, for example. If I just place this pillar on the board, like so. Um, and I click play, you're going to see that the player appears above all of the pillar, which is not desirable. So I just need to change the startup settings. So just, just uh, go back over that. Um, what I didn't do there is I didn't set the initial board to the demo. And I also want to turn off the startup program. So I'm just going to do that again. Now I'm going to click play and that's going to send me to the right board. Okay, so pretty much straight away, if I walk over these pillars, I appear above the top two tiles, which is not really what I want. I don't mind so much about appearing on an, on above this bottom one because it's close to the character. It's, it's not taller than where the character would be in real life. So I'm just going to show you, using the layers, how we can achieve that effect. So I'm just going to go back and draw over those two. Okay, so down here in the bottom left, there is a layers tab. Um, this is similar to uh, applications like Photoshop, where you can do layering. So basically, what I'm going to do is, you'll notice is by default, when you create a board, there's only ever one layer. Uh, I'm just going to call this one my base layer. And I'm going to then down here in the bottom left, I'm going to click create a new layer. And I've created this new layer here. Uh, it's untitled. I'm just going to call this one uh, my upper layer. And this is where I'm going to put anything that I want to appear above the player. Um, and you do a lot of things with layers. Uh, you can toggle whether or not they appear or not. So I can toggle its visibility. You can also toggle its opacity. This only has an effect in the editor and doesn't apply to when it's in the game itself. But it's useful for editing things. Uh, and you can move the layers up and down too. So I move the base layer up and that, and things like that. And you can duplicate and delete layers. Um, and that's that's um, they're the basic actions that you can do with layers themselves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the upper layer, and I'm going to redraw the top of those pillars on this upper layer. And I'll save, and then I'm gonna press play. And now if I walk underneath, you'll see straight away that I appear underneath. We still got a problem though. I can walk through the bottom and, and appear out of the bottom of the pillar, which is obviously not something I want. Ideally what I want is that when I try to walk down that I'm stopped. Or if I try to walk here or here that I've stopped. To do that, we need to use collisions. So we need to set up collision vectors around our pillar bases. What does that mean? Well, a collidable area is just an area in which if the player is on the same layer, they cannot pass through that area. It has to be on the same layer as the player to have an effect. So if I were to put the collision above on the upper layer and the player is on the base layer, then you'd see that they would have no effect. And I'll, I'll show that by switching the player up one layer um, from where I'm going to put the collisions. If 
But to start with, um, if you go to the top toolbar here and you go along and you look for this kind of square, this outline looking square, this is the area, area vector tool, which we can use to draw collisions with. Um, this tool uh, draws squares or rectangular objects and you just left click to start drawing and then you can drag it to wherever you want and then you can left click to cancel and then you'll get this red outline here and you can select that by right clicking it so it's a right click to select the object and you can delete it by either pressing the delete key or you can use your middle mouse button to delete delete them okay um it's also important to note that the selection and deletion is dependent on the layer that you are on. So if I were to draw this on the base layer, for example, and then I switched to the upper layer, if I select the upper layer, and then I try to select this vector, which is on the lower layer, I can't. So I have to switch back to the base layer and I have to then click on it and then I can edit it. But if you're not on the right layer, you can't do anything with it. And that applies to a lot of other things you're going to see as well, such as NPCs and layer images too. Okay, so you'll notice one thing when I'm drawing this, it's freehand, um, which is fine in some cases. So if I wanted to put it right underneath the pillar, I can try to do that in a freehand sense. Um, but there's a much easier way than using freehand, and that is to tell it to snap to the grid. So up here in the view, you'll notice a few options here. First option is there's a sh show to grid. You can zoom in and zoom out on the board too, which is also up here. So I can zoom in and maximize that if I want to get a little bit closer. And back under the view, I can also say show grid. And you can't really see it on this board because the, the outline is kind of dark too of each of the tiles. But on boards with brighter colors, it's a bit more obvious. Um, it even show coordinates. And this is useful um, for when you are trying to send a player from one location to the other, which we'll get into in a future tutorial. But um, just be aware that it's there. You can, you can actually show the coordinates. And the very last one, which is the one that I really want to point out is that there is a snap to grid option and I'm going to select that. What this means is it means that any tool that I use that adds something to a board will have its coordinates snapped to the top left corner of the tile that I am currently in. So I've still got the uh, area vector tool up here selected. I'm going to draw the collision again and you see straight away that just snaps. So if I draw it snapping to the tile size so I can't draw a freehand one anymore but it is snapping and if you want to draw freehand again all you have to do is toggle off snap to grid and you've got the freehand one again but for now I'm just going to snap that to the grid and now I'm doing this on the base layer which is the layer that the player is on and how can you tell what layer the player is on you'll see this flag here on the board it says layer zero and the bottom most layer here in the layer editor is layer zero. So the, the player is on the correct layer. So I'm just going to click play. Um, something important to point out when you click play, it saves all the unsaved assets in the editor. So I was previously saving every time, but you don't need to do that. You can just click play and it, you see it saves for me. Oh, sorry, there's an issue there. Uh, can click play again. Okay. Um, and if I try to walk into that pillar, I can't pass through it anymore. And perfect. Now I have some collisions. And a good tip is... Um, now, I'll just show you what I was going to show before, um, which was I was going to put the player on the layer above, and then I'm going to show you that the collisions have no effect. Uh, press play. So now the player is actually on the layer above, so I can just pass through this. So 
So you can see that collisions are um, only applied to the layer that the player is on. Or you can also be other non-playable characters as well. Okay, so I'm going to set the player back down here. And um, also in this, uh, I want to add collisions up here too, to the door areas. So up here, I can add some more collisions. I can add some collisions uh, around the edge of the board too. Let me just select that. So the player cannot walk off the board. Oh, yeah. So now the entire board has a collision boundary around it, and so does the top wall. And if I try to walk through that, I can't. And the same if I walk over here, I can't open. So that is um, rectangular based collisions in a nutshell. Um, there is another freehand vector tool that you'll see next to the area tool. What is that? That is simply the same type of tool. Um, you can draw these collisions, but you can define them in a more freehand way. So you can draw kind of custom shapes. Now there's something really, really important to note when it comes to these custom shapes is that they must all have, all their edges must be pointing in an outward direction. Um, I think it means, I think the term is convex. They need to be convex. Or is it concave? Uh, no, convex. They need to be concave or convex, convex shapes. So, what does a convex shape mean? Well, a convex shape, if we just take a look at this image, is all the edges are pointing outwards. Um, they're pointing away from the center. Whereas compared to a concave shape, some of the shapes on a concave are pointing inwards. This doesn't work with the collision system in RPG Wizard. Um, that's kind of a complicated topic, but basically the, the collision logic can't handle concave shapes. So just need to be aware that if you do draw anything in a freehand mode, you need to have all the edges pointing out from the center. Otherwise, I'll just show you here quickly. Um, I'll draw a concave shape. Um, let's find somewhere suitable to draw. I'll draw a concave shape over on this side. So I'll draw one with all the edges pointing outwards. And then I'll do the same thing over here and I'll draw a con. Oh, sorry, this was a convex shape. And now I'm going to draw a concave shape. So I'm going to draw one with the edges point inwards. So like this, and what you'll see is that the collision on this object over here, when I try to walk over here, isn't really going to work. Um, it's going to break. So there's a concave, convex shape over here. I'm just going to follow where the edges are. You can see I can walk around this virtual shape. But if I go over here to the concave shape, you see the edges are pretty broken. It's uh, it's not really colliding exactly where it should be. I can't walk into the middle of it. Yeah, and you'll see different uh, issues. Like sometimes you'll be able to pass through them. So uh, just make sure all your freehand vectors are drawn in a convex way and not concave. So. That pretty much covers the topics of layering and collisions uh, for this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to create some NPCs uh, and I'm going to show you, um, how you how you create an NPC and put it onto a board. And in a future video after that, I'm going to talk about um, board linking. So I'm going to send the player from one, video, one board to the next. Um, I will cover a lot of other few topics such as board layer images and uh, triggering programs on boards and things like that.